Today I'm canning raw packed chicken legs. Welcome to Prepping with Pam. I'm Pam. The other day on my Facebook page, I had a conversation with a lady who had some questions about uh, canning chicken. I had posted some pictures of some chicken that I canned previously, and she had some questions. So I thought, well, you know what? This is a good opportunity to do a video on canning chicken legs. So I bought a lot of chicken legs. We went to Costco the other day. Um, got a great price on chicken legs, and so I'm just going to go through the process, do them because I need them anyway, and follow along. So how I start, this is super easy. I just want to say, if you have not canned with a pressure canner before, this would be the perfect way to start. It's super easy. I consider this easier than making jam in a, in a, a water bath canner. It's, it's just so easy, I can't even tell you how easy this is, and you'll see right now. So before I get started, I filled one because I wanted to see how many chicken legs I could fit in a jar. So I'm able to fit five. So um, I like to add a little bit of salt, but not too much. So in these quart-sized jars, I'm adding a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in my jars first thing, so I don't forget. Now, I'd rather add not enough salt than too much. So, you know, if I don't like the way it tastes when I use this chicken, I can always add more salt. There we go. Easy enough. When I'm handling chicken, I like to wear a glove. Not that I can't wash my hands, but you know, ew. So, it's raw chicken. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two legs in, um, meaty side down. And then two in alternately, bone side down. And then I'm going to take one fifth one and put it right in the middle there, bone side down, and push it down. There we go. So there's five in here. And I don't know if you were able to see, so let's try this again. So two go in, meaty side down. So I'll put one on one side. One on the other. This has got the bone in it, the skin on it. I don't do anything. I just took them out of the package. And then two more go in bone side down on the other side. So you put, uh, well, we'll do it next time here. We'll get this one filled. And then the last one goes right in the middle, bone side down and push. We want to get that. In there okay so I'm putting a leg in north and south and then bone side down east and west and then you'll see there's a little space in the middle so what I'm going to do is take the leg and just put the bone right down in that space. It'll find its way. That was it. And let me show you the package. Now, uh, we went to Costco. And they have these Kirkland packages. But there, you have to cut it away because there's six all connected to each other. But this was perfect. Uh, I bought two packages. They were like $10 a package. So you got 30 chicken legs for $10. And I just, uh, to get the seventh jar, because my canner holds seven jars. So to get the seventh jar, I went and got the second package and cut it away. Now, when you process the chicken, it's gonna make its own broth because there's bones in here. The broth is delicious. 
but it's not gonna make quite enough for my liking. So you can just can it this way with no extra water. Or if you want, you can use chicken broth. I'm just putting a half a cup of water in each jar because I like my liquid to come up a little higher. And now some of these jars, you know, the water's having a bit of trouble getting down because the meat is in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little stick and bubble it. So just a half cup of water to get it on its way, but you're gonna see when they come out, they're gonna have a lot of extra broth. And don't throw away that broth, it's delicious. And then I just do this with my little bubbling tool, just to make sure the water gets down to the bottom and doesn't make any air pockets. Yeah, see all the bubbles coming out of this one. So it's a good thing I bubbled it. See? There we go. We're ready to put the lids on and put it in the canner. Now the water I used is warm water just from the tap. Uh, because the chicken legs are cold, they're not cooked, that came right out of the refrigerator. I'm starting my can, or I've got warm water in there, but basically it's a it's a cold start. I'm not it's not boiling. I don't have the water on uh, the heat on yet. And then what I do is I take a either a napkin or a paper towel and dip it in vinegar because I want to make sure if any um, we don't want any fat to be on the rim here, and that would interfere with your seal. I mean, look how easy this is. Anybody can do it. And if you've never used a, a pressure cooker before, a pressure canner, not a cooker, a canner, there's a difference. Then you put your lids on. Now the um, head space on this is one inch, and so the bottom thread is one inch, that leg's sticking up a little bit, but there's so much air in here. Um, you know, I could push it down, but I'm not going to. And I can uh, tell you, you know, I canned with a water bath canner for years before I started pressure canning. I was afraid of the pressure canner. You know, you think it's going to blow up or something on you. It's not going to blow up. There are safety features built into these canners. I'm just going to put these right in here. Like I said, this canner holds seven, so I wanted to make sure I had seven jars. I, when I do my canning, I like to do a whole load if I can. And I have pre previously... Um, I washed my lids. Don't take them out of the box and just use them like that. You do need to wash them, but be careful because I cut myself real bad one time. The edges of these uh, lids are sharp. There's seven right there. Now I've already oiled the edges on. This is a um, all-American canner and with the All-Americans because there's no rubber gasket you have to oil there's like a little lip in here and I just take a little olive oil and you oil it there so that the lid will come off easily so now what I'm going to do is wait for it to heat up and build some pressure and some steam when this starts steaming uh, I have to time it for 10 minutes Getting ready for this video, I had an incident with my vent. When you wash your, your, uh, the lid to your canner, always hold the lid up and take a look through that vent hole to make sure you can see light through it, that nothing's blocking it. 
and I always do it. I've never found anything. And this is a new canner. I've only done, a, I don't know, maybe three loads in this canner. I looked through the hole, I couldn't see any light. Well, that's a little weird. So I looked, I figured, well, I'll stick a toothpick through there and I couldn't find a toothpick. So I got a needle and I kept sticking the needle in there and looking through, I could not see any light. I didn't know what the problem was. So um, I took that needle and I just really scraped the sides of inside that vent. And then I put my mouth on it and I blew. And then I held it up and I saw beautiful light. So I've never had clogging really in my vents before, but that, you know, and this is a new canner. So I, I shouldn't, it shouldn't have been clogged. I don't know why it was. Always check your vent. That vent now is where I'm gonna put my weight. And that's gonna, and I thought the last day yesterday when I was using it, it, it didn't seem right. It wasn't, uh, like it wanted to jiggle, but it wasn't jiggling right, and I had to keep tapping it. And so um, I guess that what was wrong. I, I didn't really, I'm going to admit to you, I didn't check the vent yesterday. So this is the lesson learned. Always check your vent, even if it's a brand new pressure canner. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead and let this um, heat build up, and then I'll bring you back with me. Thank you. Okay, it took about 45 minutes for this canner to get hot enough to start steaming. I don't know if you can see this, it's hard with the camera here. Can you see that? You can certainly hear it. But now that it's started steaming, I'm going to time it for 10 minutes before I put the weight on. 10 minutes has passed and it's time to put the weight on the vent. There. 10 pounds of pressure where I live. If you live under a thousand feet above sea level, yours will be 10 pounds also. Now that the weight has started jiggling, I can set my timer. And because these are quart-sized jars and there are bone in the chicken, I'm going to set my timer for an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, I just took the chicken out of the canner. And as you can see, the chicken makes a lot of its own juices. But remember, I added a half a cup of extra water. I like the, um, the liquid to go up higher towards the top of the jar so like this one here is pretty high so i shouldn't you know you don't want to add more than a half a cup because that's almost up to the top with the uh, one inch head space some of these are lower it really just depends on the size of the chicken legs and how much juice was in them but as you can see it made its own broth and the chicken can be used in casseroles or pot pies or whatever you like it's all cooked thoroughly cooked. So make sure you use that broth when you're cooking with the chicken. Well, I hope you found my video helpful. Um, do me a favor, if you did find it helpful, please uh, look below and hit the subscribe button and uh, the little bell because I do several of these videos a week. And so if you hit the bell, you'll get notification when a new um, when a new video has been posted. And again, you can visit my website at www, if I need to say that, urbanpreppingwithpam.com. And uh, links to these videos will be there along with recipes and instructions and other kinds of conversations. So I uh, hope this was helpful for you. And uh, I hope you give it a try because uh, it, you, as you can see, it's easy. Anybody can do it. Have a great day.